Oh, Prince Rupert's drop has been a curiosity of science for almost 400 years. Formed by dropping molten glass in cold water, it creates a tadpole-like structure. The tail, when snipped, disintegrates into uh, an explosive powder, the entire structure disintegrating instantly. Uh, the bulbous head uh, has the compressive strength of 100,000 PSI. And just for a frame of reference, uh, Glock 40 fires a bullet at around 35,000 PSI. Uh, so the, the head of this structure is bulletproof, whereas... Uh, uh, one little crack of the tail uh, brings the whole thing down. And I, I think this is a, a, a good metaphor for the church today. Uh, whereas for believers in uh, Christ, uh, we have a Messiah who serves as the head, uh, this bulletproof head of the church, the word of God. And uh, we uh, who uh, make up the body of Christ uh, and are weak and fallible and prone to sin, uh, we are the tail. And it's through our sin that these cracks enter and uh, have the potential to fracture the entire structure. Uh, where we see today a desire to, uh, by for, for many in the church, to create a sin-free world at, at virtually all costs. Um, uh, there, there's, uh, the church has sort of accosted the uh, a political movement um, and uh, is using any means necessary to create uh, in, install sort of a, a theocracy of some kind. Uh, but there's a, a level of violence and vengeance involved in that kind of thinking. In the Old Testament, we see Israelites who were called into the world to move holiness into the world and drive out uh, godless people, people that were at war with God, that worshiped other gods. Uh, the Old Testament stands on tiptoes and looks over the horizon of uh, the pages of Scripture into the New Testament, where we now are on the other side. We're in the post-Messianic era, where a new covenant has been formed, a new, an entirely new paradigm has been created uh, because of the work that was done on the cross. And so Christians have been called out of the world uh, to, to, to themselves be holy and separate, a temple, and uh, an example to all. But no longer called to be driving any, anything any, anybody out. And uh, we see that in Romans 12, 19 through 21. It says this, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, what are Christians called to? If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you'll heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So if we are going to leave the structure of the Rupert drop, the church, and look outside of it to people who have not asked or, or agreed to be a part of that, we're called to only service their needs, to, to go out into the world and look for ways to love uh, and reserve any vengeance or wrath for God alone. And that's not what we see the church doing today by any stretch. Rather, what we see the church doing today is talked about in Proverbs 6, uh, 16 through 19, where we see the seven abominations that God talks about. Think about this in the context of our modern day and what's going on throughout the church, through uh, the Christian politics, and uh, see just what side of the line that many in the church fall on these days. It says this, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. The church has, I feel like, um, forgotten how to become a, a peacemaker um, and rather has decided to go to war against a world that that disagrees with it and that it, it disagrees with. And the pages of the New Testament make it very clear if you're to be a Christian, um, we are to to be peacemakers, to be living the, the antithesis to the Proverbs 6 uh, definition of the abominations to God and to withhold any vengeance or wrath and rather repay anything we see in the world that we don't like with love. Those who have not agreed to be a part of the Rupert drop, the body of Christ, uh, can't fracture that. They're not, they're not invested in that yet. So the, the cracks and fissures that start in the tail and work its way up 
exploding the entire structure uh, can only come from within the church, which is why uh, the New Testament spends so much time talking about why we're to love, why we're called out of the world to be an example, to be salt, to be light. This is also why the New Testament uh, allows uh, an organized, uh, f uh, formal, uh, very kind, patient, loving uh, method to uh, chastise uh, those within the church who are allowing sin to enter because it's, it's through these cracks that sin enters and through those cracks that damage is done to the church, uh, but ignores uh, the behavior of those outside the Rupert Drop or the church. Uh, so if we are to attack anybody, for lack of a better word, it would be those members inside the church uh, living out these uh, abominations. Um, talked about in Proverbs, uh, being vengeful uh, towards those outside the church, uh, talked about in Romans. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're told to mind your business. <laughs>